So we're going to make that into a solution here. Add that slowly, and we're just going to stir this until it is completely dissolved. It may take a little bit of heating in the microwave. Okay, as you can see, the dichromate has completely dissolved. It's now a clear orange solution. Um, I should note that uh, you should be careful when handling all solid dichromates, dichromate solutions, chromium trioxide, etc. Not only are they uh, fairly strong oxidizers, but also they are chromium in the plus six oxidation state, also known as hexavalent chromium. So they all pose a, a cancer risk to humans, so, or so, so be careful. Anyway, uh, the next step, of course, is to uh, start adding the sulfuric acid. So I have here 200 milliliters of 93% sulfuric acid, which I'm going to begin to add slowly to this uh, with stirring. And we're going to watch for a permanent precipitate. So we're just going to add a little, wait a bit, add a little, a little more, wait a bit, and then uh, as soon as there's a permanent precipitate, um, then we have an exact, uh, an exact concentration of chromium trioxide, at which point we can add a known amount of sulfuric acid to precipitate the rest. So... The reason for that is because uh, we don't know exactly how dry this dichromate was. It's going to take quite a bit to start, so we can go ahead and uh, add a bit aggressively. You can see the color sort of reddens as we, as the uh, chromic acid equilibrium is favored. Getting very red now, which is a good sign. Sort of the same color as solid chromium trioxide. If you've ever cleaned labware, you know that's also about the same color as chromic acid. Alright, so this has cooled down quite a bit, and we're getting a little bit of chromium trioxide precipitating, but uh, to precipitate the rest, we'll add the rest of the sulfuric acid, which includes 200 more milliliters. Now, it's not uh, and it's not disadvantageous to add as much sulfuric acid as you possibly can. We could add like three liters of sulfuric acid if we really wanted to, but uh, to get about uh, 60 or 70 percent yield, about 400 milliliters of sulfuric acid is needed per uh, the 250 of water and the uh, 100 grams of the dichromate dihydrate. So in goes the next 200 with stirring. And you can see there, that is the chromium trioxide precipitating out. You have to add the sulfuric acid slowly, because as, as you can see, uh, adding more sulfuric acid rapidly uh, precipitates dichromate, which then quickly converts to chromium trioxide. But it's okay, because the dichromate will eventually convert to trioxide with prolonged stirring, so just finish adding all of that. So now that it's all relatively stirred together, um, and it's also quite hot, I'm going to turn off the stirring, and again, we'll allow it to slowly cool the room temperature to precipitate as much chromium trioxide as possible, um, and uh, also increase the size of those crystals, which you can see now are quite abundant, uh, before we move on to the next step, which is, of course, filtration. All right, so it's been uh, it's been cooling overnight, and you can see now we've got a uh, rather thick solution with a lot of uh, chromium trioxide precipitated, and so now we're just going to filter that out. Now, these crystals are, I mean, they're little flocks. They're not that big, but... Uh, I'm not sure if uh, my filter will be able to effectively filter all of the sulfuric acid, but it's just going to require more nitric acid to wash, so I'm not really that concerned about it. So uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and filter this. Otherwise, I could have uh, I could heat this up to approximately 100 C and uh, cool it down repeatedly to increase the crystal size. Right, you get more in solution, you get to precipitate out, um, or cooling this more slowly by wrapping it in towels or something. But um, I think for all intents and purposes, with this much, um, I'm not going to waste too much nitric acid washing the sulfuric acid out of it. So anyway, um, let's go ahead and filter this now. I've set up here for vacuum filtration. I've got a one liter round bottom flask to catch the liquid since my biggest jointed Erlenmeyer is not quite big enough. That's on my wish list actually. Um, so the plan is we're going to filter the chromium trioxide from the solution. Hopefully uh, we can get most of the sulfuric acid out of it by leaving it on the vacuum for a little while. And then we're going to wash it with nitric acid. And the reason for that is because if we were just to filter, filter this from the sulfuric acid and then try and dry the remaining chromium trioxide that's in there, it wouldn't really dry because sulfuric acid has a very low vapor pressure. In fact, it picks up water from the air. So if you leave it out, it appears to get wetter and wetter. So if we were to try and dry this, it'd be nearly impossible and our chromium trioxide would be perpetually contaminated with sulfuric acid, which is bad news for a lot of reactions. So what we're going to do is wash it with a more volatile acid. And the reason we need to use a strong acid to wash it is, of course, because uh, it won't dissolve into strong acid. If we have a weak acid, of course, based on that equilibrium I showed you earlier, 
um, it would just dissolve and wash away. Also, we can't use hydrochloric acid because it'll form chromal chloride. So that would be bad news as well. Can't use it, it reacts. So we're gonna have to use some azeotropic nitric acid to wash it, and then uh, we'll just spread it on a plate to dry and uh, basically volatilize the nitric acid, which boils at a nice low temperature. So anyway, let's, uh, let's get started. Just the acid itself is taking a little while to get through the frit, so this is going to take a little while to filter uh, this sediment here. Alrighty. See by the vacuum gauge that that uh, vacuum pump is working hard to pull the uh, sulfuric acid out because it's so thick. And that's just at room temperature. That's another one of the reasons why I didn't uh, refrigerate this first. Otherwise, we'd never be able to filter it. All right, so here's my 68% nitric. I'm going to uh, measure out about 20 milliliters. I'm going to use as little of this as possible. Uh, to wash out the beaker and then pour it on top of that stuff, which will wash the sulfuric acid from it. There we go. Just like that. Of course, the goggles here are a must. If you get any of this in your eye, any of the nitric or the concentrated sulfuric with the chromium trioxide dissolved in it, it's going to be a really bad day for you. All right. Wash number one all at once. All right, that's close enough for this speaker. Now just measure out... Uh, 20 more milliliters here. All right, here we go. All at once, so it flows through in a nice even layer. You see that pulled through much faster because we got a lot of the sulfuric acid out of it. All right, it's been on suction for about 10 minutes now. So I'm gonna turn off the aspirator there. I think it's pretty much dry, as you might be able to tell. Well, not dry, but uh, dry enough for us to be able to scrape it out and uh, dry it on a plate. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So, I've got it here in the funnel. I'm just going to scrape it out. I'm going to use as many glass instruments as I can uh, because nitric acid, of course, is highly corrosive to stainless steel. So, see, it's still a paste. You may have to resort to rubber on this one. Yep. See how well this fares. All right, I think I've got uh, as much as I can out of this. You can see it's you know, the crystals were pretty fine, so it sort of clogged up the filter here. And uh, I got quite a bit out of it, though. I'm kind of happy with that. But uh, I suppose I should have uh, cycled the temperature a few more times to increase the crystal size. So next time, if I do this, I'm definitely going to do that. But anyway, uh, I've got a decent yield. I'm going to try and get it off this rubber spatula as soon as possible because it's probably going to eat right through it. Um, and uh, yeah, this can't just get washed out in the sink, of course. It's heck full of hexavalent chromium, so it's got to go in a bucket of like sodium sulfite solution or something like that uh, first to make sure that you reduce that chromium down. So anyway, I'll get this on the water bath. We'll see if we can dry some of this out. All right, I got it uh, on the hot water bath. Let's see it's steaming up already. And uh, just gonna let it sit on here and see how much nitric acid we can drive off. Of course, this is giving off nitric acid fumes, so make sure they're all getting sucked out. And make sure there's nothing that you can corrode between hither and yon. Um, but everything in the lab is already super corroded, so I'm not really very concerned about that. Now, uh, there is an issue as of what to do with this, which is a whole pile of concentrated sulfuric acid. Well, not anymore, it's about 75% sulfuric acid, a little nitric acid, and a whole bunch of uh, chromic acid, essentially. So. Um, don't throw this out, actually. Uh, you could neutralize this and throw it out if you really wanted to, but save it because this is excellent at cleaning glassware. If you've got a crudded up flask, it's got carbon deposits, I don't care what's in it, this stuff works wonders at cleaning. In fact, chromic acid itself is often stocked in laboratories, or once was, 
um, because it's so good at oxidizing things and you can take like, carbon out of a flask with it. So uh, it's not really used anymore, of course, because of the EPA and the uh, hexavalent chromium released to the environment, which is bad. So uh, anyway, I'm going to save this in a separate flask, or in a, uh, in a jar actually, and uh, whenever I need to clean some really cruddy glassware, I'll just run some of this through it and uh, clean it up no problem. Anyway, in the meantime, we will wait for this to dry. Uh, this stuff's been on the water bath for about 10 minutes now, and you can see the, uh, the nitric acid vapors coming off of it. That's all that steam is, so nitric acid vaporizing. Very, very corrosive, so obviously you'll do this in a hood, and it's going to eat the crap out of all the metal that's anywhere downwind, so make sure you do this in a dedicated space. Should be about an hour until this is dry. Hopefully we got enough sulfuric acid out of it to uh, let it completely dry. But uh, time will tell. All right, it's been a few hours and you can see that we've got a nice crimson powder here of the crude chromium trioxide. Uh, it's still contaminated with a little bit of sulfuric acid and that's evidenced by uh, when you crush it with a beaker, try and break up these lumps, you end up pressing it into like a little cake, which then takes a little bit of force to break apart and then forms more chunks, which is indicative of moisture in any powder that you're trying to separate from water. But uh, in this case, of course, the instead of water, it's sulfuric acid. So this is contaminated. It can't really be used for um, for a few things, uh, but for a lot of things like maybe puritidium chlorochromate or something like that, where you have acid present anyway, it'll be totally fine. So I'm just going to leave it here. Uh, if you need it more pure, you can actually uh, recrystallize it from water, um, or you can fuse it. I tried doing that here with a smaller amount earlier in a pilot run, and it forms these lovely sort of purple flakes. Unfortunately, uh, molten chromium trioxide is extremely dangerous, so I'm not going to do it with all of this uh, out of fear at my lab, and just simply because it's not super necessary, and uh, of course holidays are coming, kind of pressed for time at the moment. So anyway, I'm just going to put this in a bottle. Here is the final product. It is 71 grams of crude chromium trioxide, which represents a really, really terrible yield. But considering uh, my dichromate was of dubious origin online, and also I'm using drain cleaner sulfuric acid, um, I think that's actually pretty good. Uh, more concentrated sulfuric acid, of course, would have produced more, but uh, you run the risk of running into the uh, bisulfate precipitation problem. So all things considered, I think this is not too bad. I actually have 500 grams of commercial chromium trioxide that I'll be using in some upcoming videos, which uh, uh, represents a much higher purity. So, uh, But I thought I'd, I'd show how it's made, uh, just as a demonstration, in case you're unable to get your hands on it or something. Anyway, I'll do a final demonstration to show uh, the strong oxidizing properties of chromium trioxide. The strong oxidizing properties of chromium trioxide are easily demonstrated by simply placing some in the bottom of the crucible, get a good amount there. And I have here a test tube with a small amount of methanol in it, and I'm going to pour the methanol onto the chromium trioxide, and uh, we'll see what happens. As you can see, it instantly bursts into violent flames. You can see that there is some green coloration there, and that is because the chromium trioxide has been reduced all the way down to uh, from three oxide. Neat. Well, that's about all I have on chromium trioxide. I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it, that's for sure. Uh, if you liked the video, please press the like button. And if you'd like to see more of these videos, please press the subscribe button. Uh, I also have a new Patreon account by popular demand. You can see the link in the description. If you feel, if you'd like to. Uh, donate, please feel free. It helps me make these videos. It helps me buy better equipment. I'm looking for uh, a lapel mic and other things like that, which could uh, definitely improve the audio quality in a lot of these videos. I still have to set some goals on the website, but uh, long story short, what happens is if you donate through Patreon, um, your donation clears at the end of the month based on the number of videos I make. You can set the maximum number of videos that you want to donate toward, so you are completely in control. You can withdraw at any time, but uh, at the end of the month, your donation clears, and then you get the rewards through all of the next month. So if you donate it in the month of December, you will have the reward, which is typically your name at some various point in the video, all through January. So all my January videos are going to have all my December donators uh, listed in all of them at various levels based on how much you donated. So anyway, uh, that's about how, that's about uh, how it works. 
I was a little new to that myself as of the last video, so I hope that clears some things up. Anyway, I'm going to quit rambling now and uh, go make uh, well, holiday cookies, yay. So, thanks for watching.